Anyone who's seen Out of Africa will recall the vast herds of elephant and buffalo as seen from the perfectly romantic vantage point of a biplane with Robert Redford at the helm. Well, those scenes in that romance are not a thing of the past, especially if you're lucky enough to have cruised Botswana's Chobe River on board the magnificent Zambezi Queen. Here, along the waters dividing Namibia's Caprivi Strip from Botswana's Chobe National Park, a new benchmark for the African experience has been set. It began two years ago, when Tony Stern agreed to come on board. A plastics engineer turned beachfront property developer, he was approached to revive an existing riverboat. He agreed, but only if they could break with tradition and bring ultra-contemporary to the African bush. Everything had to be transported through three countries and then over water to get to the boat. There were no cranes, nothing to help us at all. So you had sometimes 10, 15 people picking up generators weighing over one ton. And this is a risky, dangerous and very difficult uh, operation. And once reaching the boat, you need to appreciate that we have no local skills in the area. So we had to import skills from Botswana, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and find and train local people in Namibia. Thanks to clean, linear design, the sense of space inside matches that of the surrounding country. This chic style is set in constantly changing river and bush, so the architects used clever 3D software to see exactly how the design would work. Considering you're so tall, space is obviously an issue for you. Well, Kelly, when you're six foot five, I suppose the heights of doors and ceilings, and especially showers, become an issue. Julius, taking what Tony wanted, how did you interpret that? We decided, ironically, for doing something in the middle of the bush, to use the most advanced computer graphics to model and experiment with all the options that we could. In the end, we modeled every single piece of furniture, the bathrooms, the shower, make sure that Tony could fit in it. And we ended up with a virtual representation of the boat six months before it was completed. Vast floods held up completion for three months, but this was worth the wait. As for lunch, with the sous chefs and waiters all trained by maverick African foodie Pete Goffwood, the tastes are perfectly paired with the surrounds. To work it off, though, would require a serious afternoon's game fishing. The reason why we do have so many tigers in this area is because, firstly, I'll say it's a conservancy. They don't catch the fish using net or gill nets. And from there, we support catch and release. And, um, well, the main reason is uh, this river linked into the Zambezi River. It's really an amazing river in terms of uh, tigers. The cruise offers fishing and game viewing, plus Makoro dugout tours to local villages. But Kelly was going to catch something, even if it took her all day. Sometimes, like, is it cloudy like this, fishing, or the tiger fish will swim deep. So you have to use something that goes deeper. The bigger the leap is, the more deeper it goes. Our presenter wasn't too fussed about whether she caught a tiger fish or a bream, both abundant in the Chobe River. If you are casting with a lure or with bait, a catch is almost certain. What's that, what's that, what's that, what's that? Oh wow, it's a water monitor. It's not a crocodile. Sorry, it's not a crocodile. <laughs> it's not can't eat my fish. No, not at all. It can't. <laughs> it feeds onto eggs, but sometimes it could scavenge on fish. Catch and release is all well and good, but you do have to catch something first. And she had. True to reputation, our dedicated river guide had delivered the goods. What is it? Uh... <laughs> Hello, fishy. <gasps> I caught a fish. We caught a cat. Fish. It's actually quite a fight. You have to really yank it. Ooh. Everybody wins here. You get the thrill of the catch, and your fish lives to fight another day. Chobe's known for more than its catfish, though, and the sighting of crocs or hippo is just a teaser for the main feature, the greatest living population of elephant anywhere on the planet. A full 120,000 strong, this herd is from a family line uninterrupted since elephants first roamed here. This is the very reason why people come to this area. This is a once in a lifetime spotting. I've never been this close to elephants, especially little babies. Look how relaxed they are. They're just playing in the water right in front of us. How you ever go back to regular game drives after this is hard to imagine. But to see the more elusive leopard, the rare puku antelope, or roan, sable, and giraffe, they do offer 4x4 four four excursions as well. The animals in the Chobe National Park are some of the best in Africa, if not the world. 
And if you look around, the natural beauty is, is quite remarkable. And if you look at the, the opportunity to fish, to game view, to walk, to meet local traditional Africans in their village environment is quite unique. Some naturalists say that animals share our human sense of awe. So perhaps the Chobe wildlife regard this graceful cloud of a boat with their own kind of appreciation. Firstly, it has no propellers whatsoever, so it doesn't create any damage to the waterbed. It also has solar-powered hot water. Even our showers use half the normal water that a boat would use. We have two generators. We process 4,500 litres of water an hour. So it's really a, a mini city by itself. The final tab was twice the original estimate, but how can you put a price on this? The challenge was to create something really contemporary in an African environment. And in fact, this has hardly been done anywhere in the world. And when we, when we started on this project, there were many people who doubted that this look would, would, would work out in this environment. And we're very happy with the results. Going to sleep each night, surrounded by Africa as it was before mankind, but in the kind of luxury only modern man can offer, call it natural balance with five stars.